You're gonna let the wheel be wrong? I wouldn't say that the wheel is wrong. I think that there's definitely a bit of a communication issue between our production team and the wheel. Mm. Maybe they interpret it the wrong way when it speaks to them. We usually have a bit of a better way of dealing with this, but then again, we also have more experience with the wheel. Because so, we, we hang know on, hang the on, wheel Tador. is wrong. I know that you feel like you're right. I can hear it in your voice. You're starting to grumble a little bit. But I'm getting <laughs> production cues right now to let us know it is ambiguous. It is a 3-0 either way. Okay. So I just want you to know you're wrong. I'll accept that. He accepted it. I was wrong already early and apologize for it's a shush. You accepted being wrong? Okay, so first of all, you are lying. <laughs> Production just told me. <laughs> no, no, they didn't. <laughs> don't start spreading lies. Production no. just told me that they didn't talk to you. Okay. So you are actually pretending. Okay. Either they hey, lied to both of us. Is production against us? No, they 100%, I swear on my left foot, like legitimately with the sock out. He's starting stuff. Oh my god, production is lying to us now too. I can't, I don't know if I can trust those people. I thought you actually let trust fall between us for a second there. Sorry? You let trust break between us for a second there. You actually believe production in a moment compared to the many hours we've had together. Hey, you are devious enough to actually pull that off. <laughs> I would believe that immediately. Well, with all that being said, it comes down to He plays the ambiguous. He does? Mm. But believe me, he's uh, very mischievous. Yeah, I can be. I can be. That's good. There's layers involved here. All right, no? so 3-0 either way. I either can way. definitely see that happen. And we know the wheel is never wrong, so yeah, that's it. We're 1v1'd. Everything is good. We're moving in here into Cursed Hollow. And we'll see if Leftovers are able to keep up with the Wheel of Wisdom and get a 3-0 in this series. Or if Monkeys will have something to say about that. I mean, I certainly hope so. To be honest, at some point, you have to just get your act together. And we were impressed by how well the Monkeys played at the beginning of the phase because they defeated the Zealots, who struggled heavily at the beginning and have since then improved. And also we had a good showing of the Monkeys, I think it was against Team Liquid, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yeah. Um, but ever since then, they've been doing quite poorly. And I really want them to show a bit more of that Monkey aggression that had been highlighted in the past too. I mean. Trick Esports was a team that was really known to be just out there, you know, like they had their strategies, they were sort of a little bit wonky, they brought in some of Alex's picks, but their drafts worked and you always know there's a threat at least. Yeah. Right now, they're just getting just they, they're just getting pummeled around every single game that I'm It feels them. like their plane is out of fuel and they're in full nosedive mode right now. And they're just trying to figure out how to recuperate. We'll see if they can figure that out. Genji Tracer has been banned. There goes the Zeratul ban once again. No 1v9s happening. And this is Battleground, and Alex is willing to pick up Zeratul too. That's the one that interests me now. What, Monkey's ban? Yes. Do you target something on the map? Avatha. They hate Avatha. We know that. Let it throw in the last one. But okay, now, where does my app land? Because Leftovers can easily pick it before the next ban. Yeah. No problem. You don't have to first pick that. I feel like Leftovers would want to get Murden if they can, but they can also give that up. There's also that Kane factor. You want to get him in for linked. Leftovers will stick with Dahaka, though. Looking I'm for still global presence. waiting for Leftovers to go into my F Phoenix. Mm. Could be on that 2-3. Monkeys can play Phoenix, so they can take away, but I don't know if they play my F. I feel like we had Maki try it once at the first portion of 2018. It doesn't feel like that style. Like yeah, that. it doesn't. Hanzo Anubrak. An Anub is their style. Yeah, Anub is definitely their style. This is something that they played over and over and over again. And uh, so far, they had Anubrak on. I mean, on this map, this is actually a map where monkeys are currently 2-2. Two and two. And with Anubrak, they played once and they won that game. But I think it was also that Zaratul game, if I'm not mistaken. But Anubrak is definitely a hero that does a bit better for Rimmer Baller right now and for them in general. But yeah, there's Phoenix, there's Muradin. I would still ban my FR just to be on the safe side. This would be the one hero where I just say, like, yes, leftovers are strong with it. Yeah, they might not want to pick it here, but I really don't care because they got tracked in the last game. Do you really want to target support here? They do. So there's Kane. Okay. And Link obviously can go into other options. I mean. Ring, Ling is going to be happy to take Rhaegar. Yeah. If he has to. And Rhaegar actually be good here. Yeah. There's also more than that. I mean, can always go uh, a different way here. Karazim is up to you. Okay, Blaze gets banned out. 
I'm more curious to see if like, dazzle me monkeys. Bit. Dazzle me monkeys. What are you gonna dazzle with us? Where's Butcher at? No, you are doing it. You think so? I mean, it would be fun. Mini on web. Yeah, lamb to land on Phoenix after okay. you just teleport. Take the disintegrate away. I have Malfurion, so Dehaka ban Malfurion, pick disintegrate, take it away so that it can't be used against the Nubarak. You have good damage here to follow up. I like it so far. Offlane is still the question. Alex Hero is missing, but how is Leftover is going to react to it? Because right now they have their Phoenix again. That's their go to when Tracer's banned out. They have Murden for Mopsio, that's always a good one. Karazim over Rega and Greymane. So they have dive to fall upon Murden. A lot of this composition comes down to a Stormbolt or a Dragbane hit. But if either of those two hit, Greymane and Karazim will be there in a second. And you can even go Planet Cracker here just to make sure you destroy that target. All right, monkeys. What are you going to play, Alex? No Zeratul up. It's going to be Tyrael. Okay. I can see that. Bit old school. Not really the biggest fan of Tyrael right now, but I can see where they're going with this. Didn't expect I don't like it. That didn't expect the Tyrael from... I... <sighs> Any other team, I'd agree. They have their particular flair. Sure. They have at least a signification available. If they can force a fight, dive in with the Nubura, go in with Tyrael, drop the sanctification, force the fight there, I can see it. That's more so it. Or when the aggression comes from the other side and uh, Greymane goes in, you drop the sanctification and try to punish him. If that's the thought process here, it's a little bit more of what they used to play. I think that's the only reason why I'm okay with it. If they have comfortable picks for themselves, if it wasn't a double boss map, I would say go Judgment with this, right? You have Lee yeah. Hanzo, you have incredible setup for the idea of blowing up somebody. You can send a new record first, cocoon out the support. But then you have, yeah, you have, if you try to go that path, you definitely have to cocoon the Kerosene first. Yeah. After, after 16, after Cleansing Touch comes online, or you just get no, no value whatsoever. I mean, I'm still saying that Leftovers is highly favorite here, don't get me wrong, but still. I can see that being a draft where the monkeys are more in their zone. Let's see if it pays off for them as we go into Cursed Hollow for game number two. Leftovers up 1-0, and they'll be here on the left side. Coming out, linked on Karazim, Mopsio on Murden, Pudi Boss on Dahaka, D.A.B. on Phoenix, and Blakitney on Greymane. And over to the right side, the monkeys down one game in the series. We're currently seeing Crosby playing Hanzo. We have Marco on Liming. Going for the resets. Alex on uh, Tyrael in the offlane, Ramavall on Inubarak, and of course, last but not least, we see Splendor on Malfurion. The Monkeys are the team that have so far played the least amount of heroes. 23 different heroes have been played by them. Most other teams have by now uh, crossed the 30 different heroes threshold mark. Fnatic even sitting at 43. We're gonna have an aggressive opening from the monkeys to the top lane, but leftovers can bite back with Greymane to the south. And Karazim as well. And they already do so, put some damage on the turret, and Mopsio had to back out as Maki was able to get some damage in there with the help of the turret. A significant damage action. I'm like, I look for a second as if Maki could even get a kill here with how fast those hit points dropped. But okay, top lane pressure is still on, and Podiboss is just in a spot where you can't really do too much about it. Like every now and then you have an attempt around the cooldowns, but the teams are roughly racing at the same time. Marker is attempting to get that damage in, but Blake Kidney with these moves here, I keep trying to predict it a little bit, those movements that we see every now and then from Blake Kidney on his grey main, does not work out 100% for them. But yeah, bring it. Monkeys, I want to see them a bit more aggressive. They got stomped on game number one. Is that going to be a three easy 3-0 three for leftovers, or are the monkeys going to put up a fight? Finally, the turret falls, but the same can be said in the top lane. Monkeys are working on that fort already, actually. Pony boss has to escape and back up. At this point, he's going to control this bottom left bush and soak the experience as he needs to. Leftover is actually having a bit of a difficult time getting in here. It seems like Maka is putting up more of a fight than they were expecting. Yeah, and this is a trade that definitely ends in favor of the, of the monkeys. And they can push it towards the keep even. If you do that, you will force a reaction out of leftover so that they have to retreat. The problem with that move, if you make it, is that you have to be careful that you can get, don't get flanked too hard. And they decide against it. They are moving instead down the bot lane, so it's an even trade at least for now. But we still have, 
Anu Barak waiting at the top, and now the focus mostly in the middle of the map from them. That flank you were talking about was actually built in here for leftovers with uh, Dahaka's Rush Shocker. He could come around from the back and just yeah. try to pincer maneuver them in. It's a smart play for Monkeys to pull away from that key push in the top left. All said and done, Forts are traded out for both of our teams. And we'll go back to uh, normal business, if you will, as our tribute will be spawning pretty soon. It's all about the Merc camps and trying to get lanes pushed out, trying to find an advantage somewhere on the map. And a slight leading experience for the Monkeys. It's nothing crazy, and it's going to be negated quickly when the Haka takes the top of the waves that have built up. The Nubarak can't really go to deep in there. It's actually interesting that they're sidelining this with the Nubarak right now. And the Tribute spawning here at the bot lane. Now, the Siege Chain Camp is, of course, going to help the Monkeys push this out a little bit. They do not have that global. So, Leftovers are taking their own Siege Chain Camp now, and the Haka can stay for a long time up at the top. So, if the Monkeys are making the play for the Tribute, they have to make it a snap one. Talking about Snappy, they're still going for DAB here. First one connects, second one not. And nice follow-up there from Greymane, but the root was there. Splendor was just ready for Blue Kidney. Pretty big fight already here in the middle. Alex keeping up with the pressure going for DAB. You're not giving him a chance to build up those shields. Yeah. Which means they will actually get the upper hand in the night camp push in the middle, which will go straight for that turret. Murden sneaks down the bottom left to start keeping an eye on that turret that's currently here. That material is also going to help out with the Giants. Yeah, but with the Nubarak making the rotation to the top lane now, it's easy for the Haka to turn this into an advantageous situation at the bottom tribute. So this is likely to end with Monkeys giving the tribute up. It's more so a question of can it be delayed at least. It doesn't really look likely. Alex is hiding in the bush, is not getting any interrupts in. Leftovers channel this one through. It was just an unfortunate spawn for Monkeys. They had to rotate to the top and deal with that Siege Giant camp if they can't take it right away. And there was definitely interrupt potential from Leftovers, so they made just the choice to let this one go. But Leftovers have now also taken a level 7 already. Monkeys are following now. No kills just yet in the game. Already a better start for Monkeys. Yeah, we're getting to a point where we're starting to get to 5 minutes, so. And so suddenly it becomes more of an issue if you lose one to two people in a team fight. If Monkeys or Leftovers are able to grab a boss, that threat becomes compounded because they've opened up the forts on the boss lanes already, actually. Leftovers in the bottom, by taking out that bottom right fort, can go straight for a keep push if they would like to, especially aided by a curse, as they already have the first tribute. And Monkeys can do the same in the top left corner, which means suddenly protection becomes a little bit more scary. There is a saving grace, though, for Leftovers. They have Dahaka, so again, they can defend that boss push coming in, so Monkeys shouldn't force it too heavily. If they find their opponents are trying to come in and engage, they'll probably play it safe. Yeah, Bleak Hitney also needs to be safe here, and that's exactly what he does. They know once that heroes are missing on the map, you have to just fall back and can't really uh, kind of overextend yourself here. For Leftovers, it would be fantastic to open this up with a 2-0. They need to win this. They want to win this. They want to make sure that the only obstacle between them and the Western Clash is going to be Granite Gaming next week. And that's really what they're working for here. Vision has already been granted. Mobsu is double checking the push. Dehaka is still taking his global, so he's going to get that extra value down at the bottom of the map. And they are creating space. Leftovers are creating a lot here, so we have the AB already starting the channel on tribute number two. Already halfway through. Scatterero should be able to stop that. Nice little proc there from Crosby. Monkey step up. They're wanting to fight. Dahaka in the bottom lane is still buying as much time as possible. He's going to finally brush dock in. Here he comes. Splendor on the channel. Mafio goes forward, misses the Stormbolt. Yeah, he's dodging everything actually, but Splendor is still low. Decent job by him so far. Link goes down first and Splendor survives. Kerosene was trying to go in deep for the kill, but Marke gets it. And now we see Podipos in trouble. They're focusing on him immediately. That's the second kill. The Monkeys keeping Splendor alive, dodging Stormbolt and Tong and Kerosene. And this is looking fantastic for the Monkeys here in the first battle. They may have overchased a little bit here. They would have the option to turn around and grab that boss if they had decided to do that right after their first couple of kills. They do get the tribute. So we're going to have a one for one for both of our teams. And Leftovers will respawn, but Monkeys hold on. In particular, Splendor doing a really good job there of dodging out some of the skill shots coming his way, pulling off a full circle and walking away with minimal HP. Yeah, so far he's the Jew King of the series here for sure. That was well done by him. Mopsio is also going to try and jump out of this one. There's no immediate follow up, chasing him a little bit too hard. Now the Haka is still getting bot lane value. But Monkeys are going to take the level 10 a bit sooner than their opponent. I mean, at least they're showing some teeth here, so I'm, I'm liking this. Opening up the game with two kills. Level 10s, of course, are going to change the dynamic of the game a lot. We don't have a snowball potential here, really. But I like that Monkeys are definitely opening this up, this game up a little bit more aggressively than what we've seen in the first map. 
Tens connect. Second tribute in position for monkeys in the top right corner, but leftovers can get over there in position fast as they would like. They already have Murden nearby, watching the area. Greymane also sharking to the top right bush as well. If anyone were to overstep, him and Murden could delete them pretty quickly. Level 10 pick will be go for the throat for Greymane as he's hoping to take out Hanzo or Lee Ming. Sanctification is going to be the play now. Dehaka, by the way, at the bot lane here with a lot of space created. Seven sided comes out. The silence is also hitting as the Twilight Dream connects. Cocoon is in play. Sanctification used in Dehaka is isolated. They can try and go for him, and they do. Podiboss is in trouble, but can they secure that kill? Not likely. Marcus survives so long, but then Greymane secures another kill for leftovers. The first one for them, actually. The counter approach here, but Alex is falling. He tries to get the explosion off, and he will against Pody Boss, but it is just not enough to get a kill. Leftover to start the second tribute. Move in for the night camp as well. Oh, the side night gets it. Looks like they're just starting to set up a potential kill on Hanzo, who may have came forward to try and do a scatter arrow to delay that tribute. Leftovers will have Giants pushing in the top lane. They have two tributes here, the one of the monkeys, and they already have their ways pushing out, so feeling pretty strong about that. I was wondering if they would have made a boss play there, but they played it safe. They could have tried, yeah, but it's uh, they do it at the bot lane. They're not going at the top because that's where monkeys are pulled to anyways because of the Siege Shine camp. But now that you see a Nuburag and Liming defending against the Siege Shine's top side, you know that you have the time to go for the boss at the bottom of the map since the rotation would just take too long. So they take the boss here, and the monkeys are also responding with the boss play on their own. It's a little bit late in comparison, but you still have, of course, Hanzo with this, so they can take that. The problem is that the next tribute is already spawning in 20 more seconds. They still have the time to make the rotation. The issue just simply is it's a position where leftovers have already taken their spot. So you have to push into that position, and that's always annoying. Yeah, they have all the gadgets to defend this leftovers, so... Monkeys may have to consider just prepping for the curse and defending it. And they're doing that. They're going to put a new brick at the top lane on the boss so they can still experience. They're going to get the night camp in the middle as well to stop the aggressive push coming their way while Linked starts the channel on the tribute, and that will be cursed. Now, how much can leftovers get out of this? They need to still defend the top lane, so that's something that they still have to pull off. But they have a massive push through the middle because of the camp. Now, monkeys took their own camp here. The defense is, they can actually make a really good defense here. Bot lane boss is going to be attacked right now, but there is potential for the monkeys to not fall too far behind with this. Arrow connects, right on the kidney. Especially if they can get a kill here. Take some damage. The Hawk is rotating in. No kill. Salvo comes out. The monkeys are fine. They're able to back up, but they still have to worry about defending this curse coming in. In fact, their defense was actually pretty solid. With giants in the bottom lane, no minion waves are pushing in. The top is pushing into that boss. Leftovers only get a fort. Yeah, that push, I mean, the attack that we saw there was a bit interesting. We didn't have a stronger follow-up for it, I feel. But the push didn't do too much for, for the leftovers through that boss. I mean, if you look at the experience lead, and it's just tiny. There's not really a lot happening here. Muradin is now at the bottom of the map dealing with the Siege Giants. But in the middle, we have that space used by the monkeys to try and take even a few more turrets, or at least drop the damage in. So the monkeys are still in a pretty okay spot here, considering that they just suffered through an entire curse. Yeah, I would agree. Impressive defense for them, honestly. Even with the engage on a new They go for Mirrodin. Oh. They try to kill, and they might get it, but oh, mobs here goes deep, and he has the healing static that keeps him alive for a bit longer. Cocoon is out. Seven-sided being used here as we have the leftovers chasing in, and that's the end of Li Ming. Damage is gone with Market Dad. It's time to chase again, and the leftovers, they want more kills, and they find one against Teriel. They're trying to go for a second or third one, and they do complete that too. Take down Malfurion, and that's where the level lead now comes from. Up to this point, Monkeys were still in an okay spot, but now things are starting to hurt. Dead timer's still a little bit low here. I think you should be able to get this turret. Maybe the will, but shouldn't be a keep. The leftovers grouping up with the minion wave. They have Dhaka in the middle too. Giants are pushing in the top as well, so they are getting a little bit of pressure there. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's the problem. You push the bot lane, but you also have something set up towards the top. So they are going to lose a lot on the map now. Monkeys down one and a half levels again. This is just going to continue through those siege giants here. Someone will have to react eventually, but it's actually Dehaka that moves in first. Once he clears out the wave, he should be able to make the play for the fort itself. And Liming is still busy at the bot lane, dealing with the pressure against the keep. So not a good spot for monkeys to be in. Leftovers want the level 16, and once they have it, they can make additional plays for tributes. And also, once the bosses are back in business, they can make these plays too. Sanification up at about 20. 
I'm trying to figure out if monkeys want to come over here and deal with this tribute. Probably not. Let's give this up with leftovers getting 16. It's only one tribute, too. But where do they go from here? What's their way of really kind of holding down the map? Do they get 16 and try to force a fight at that point? I mean, they got a good fight set up earlier. The attack against Grayman in the middle was actually not too bad. It just felt that the fight was still odd to me because I'm not quite sure what they were trying to achieve with it. Just slow them down and uh, buy themselves some time so that the tribute doesn't or the curse doesn't hurt too much. Because they initially started all of the action against Greymane and then nobody followed up on the stuns, even though Anubarak was there. So that looked a little bit odd where I was just like, okay, are you not are you trying to fight or are you not trying to fight? Yeah. Hanzo wasn't there, he threw the arrow from quite a bit away. But if you try to make that snap kill happen, that's the way to do it. So monkeys, they can either let this one go because it's the first tribute or the fourth, no matter how depending on how you look at it, for the leftovers. So you could let this one go. And I think that's what they should do. Just get 16 and then fight on the talent. But they're not getting picked off on the map because it's highly unlikely that Alex is going to be able to move away from this. They're jumping in from every single side. And yeah, seven side comes in. Another kill for them. For the monkeys, this is literally just get 16, take fights, and then try to win those team fights. Take bosses on the map, maybe get a curse, do something with the momentum that you can build up. They have to stop this train. If that death had come 10 seconds later, Leftovers would be able to try to grab the boss in the top right corner because it does spawn in about 20 seconds. But the thing is that Monkeys will be back with Tyrion, who has Holy Ground and Sanctification. So, unfortunate for them, but still a nice kill as they hit 16. Monkeys are working on that 16, as you were mentioning. The Leftovers will have their own boss grab in the bottom left corner. I mean, one of the big problems is still that you have a Dehaka against you. So it's not only that your opponent is ahead in kills, having better team fights and having an experience lead, it's also that you're up against the Dehaka, who now that the map opens up has just way more space to deal with these lanes, push them out, make sure that you lose even more experience and that he gains it, and also pressure keeps at them some point. 16 is what the monkeys want, and they're going to get it. But can they follow up with kills? One to one on tributes. No team has to fully commit to this. But this is one of those moments when you actually, if there is a team fight, the team that wins it can go for boss. Yeah. And Leftovers are setting up here on the top right. Mafia trying to bait maybe a fight in towards these bushes. He goes in for the hop, looking for a target. Maka able to teleport back. Rimmer comes in, goes for the knockup. But the seven-sided strike puts some damage on Rimmer. Great stun, though, but Anubarak still Isolation. falls. Yeah, Anubarak goes in alone, and that just can't happen against the Karazim with the seven-sided. The follow-up by Hanzo was good, but it just didn't produce the counter kill that they needed after the beetle got blown up. And if they lose more heroes now, and I don't see how Splendor's going to get away from this one, then uh, they will be a boss attempt. Yes, the mouth is down. The trying go for Alex. That's the third one. But Kidney, come on, give me a cleave. Alex continues to run. Buying as much time as he can, even using the smite as well. Link is chasing him down. The boss has been started in the top right corner. Yeah, but the thing is, if he still falls, then you just stack at another death. Yeah. And they are committing two heroes to it. <laughs> He's trying to make the plays here, and he might actually get away somehow. I'm still not 100% certain. If he lost vision, then maybe. But here's the kill, and now look at the death timers. 10 seconds on Malfurion, and now it's another 30 seconds gap between the two of them until we have Alex back. So you just delayed your death. Didn't really do anything for you. You're two levels behind. Your opponent already took the boss. The next tribute is spawning. You can go for the second boss at the bot lane, and you get the tribute that just spawned because your Tyrael staggered deaths. Double boss play. Yeah. I got to shout out Potty Boss, by the way, in the last team fight, landing in isolation right on Tyrael when he came in to get that sanctification, which would have saved the Anubrak from falling. Solid play by him. Make sure Saint could not come out. Leftovers now with that second boss. Being cleaned up, they'll start to channel two. So there goes the uh, curse as well. They should be able to clear up the giants are in the bottom lane. I would even time it. Just don't don't channel it yet. I would have cleared out the bottom wave. I would have. You have vision at the top lane. You can actually delay the channel on the tribute a little bit and allow the boss to move forward a little bit more. Arguably, they don't need to. Yeah. But I think in this case, you could have definitely cleared the first wave and allow the boss to walk in a little bit more. You gain a few more seconds of the curse that uh, are going to help you. Either way, this is going to hurt. Two last level fight. advantage. Yeah, this is, it's pretty much a last fight right now. All right, watching for Dragon's Arrow. That'll be the one to indicate that they want to fight the monkeys. Here it comes. Boom, it connects. Alex Poji goes in with the Druins. Looks for the Holy Ground on the back right. Side of inside strike being used too. Sanctification on the front line to make sure he doesn't take too much damage. The Leftover starts to buy, 
backwards here. Here's the Salvo hitting four. And Li Ming sees Murden on the back right. Murden comes out and drops a Stormbolt. Gets a Stormbolt in and Splendor is immediately in trouble. Great fight again by the leftovers. Oh, Good coordination. There's the 20. The kill for a kill as we have Hanzo and Greymane fall. Still a four versus four and the boss is still doing work. Curse for another seven seconds. The rest of the team is also on the run and then Phoenix moves in to drop a Nuburak. They are chasing the rest down as well. The boss is already on the core. Alex is about to get even stunned out here. Marke is in trouble, barely gets away. DAB's 20 gets brocked, the Unconquered Spirit, but the core is falling. Core is falling, down to 50, down to 40. And even if the Monkeys were able to clear this up, there was a wave in the top lane coming in too, which should have helped secure the win. Leftovers go up two to zero over the Monkeys. Monkeys put up a little bit more of a fight there, but Leftovers towards the end are able to have a little bit more macro. Force a good fight. Quality boss with the sick isolation of that top right to make sure that same vacation came out. This really kind of dashed the dreams of monkeys. Yeah, leftovers with just another day in the office. Very, I mean, there's very little to say. Monkeys are. I mean, let's be brutally honest. Monkeys are just not playing on the same level right now when you look at this. Leftovers are strong and they play very coordinated fights. They have some moments where the, le where the monkeys are getting a kill, but if you look at the way that the map is being played, that they are rotating and also how they're engaging in the fights, the leftovers are just on a different level. Yeah. Leftovers That's really what getting what they down. want there. They're forcing these fights. Phoenix is able to get the most amount of value in a team fight no matter what he wants. Blakitney looking pretty solid there on the gray main too. Diving to the back line. A little bit a little aggressive on that core rush, but at least he traded out Hanzo there, which allowed for the boss to hop on top of the core. And with Hanzo not bringing the scatter arrows, Leftovers, of course, took the 20 and got the win. So we're looking 2-0 to zero here. Is there any way going into game three the monkeys can pull this back? Or do you think they're just going to fall flat? Not if they don't step it up. I, I'm, I, I'm really disappointed right now. Yeah. Because I think uh, a few of the fights had potential, but you see, uh, everybody moves out and Nuburak dives through into a seven sided Karazim. The, the early death on Cassia, on, uh, on the first map, on Volskaya, where in the five versus five scrimmage at the beginning, Crosby jumps forward with Cassia into four. The Mayev is more so surprised than anything else and is like, uh, okay. Grabs him, tethers him, and it's an insta kill. Those are situations where you can say, okay. You press the wrong button, you uh, make a misplay, it happens. But the problem is it happens too much right now. Mm. It happens too continuously, and you can't make these mistakes so often without getting punished if you play someone like Leftovers who are really having their eyes set on the Western Clash, who want to take this right now. So do they have it from a skill perspective? Of course they do. Sure. But they need to step it up as a team and coordinate these attacks a little bit more because a lot of this is just disconnect. There's a Nuburak play when he went in and runs solo into the seven-sided and everybody else moves out. It's not because he's horrible on the hero. It's simply because he thinks they go in as Tyrael gets attacked and everyone else is just like, okay, we go back reset and then we go in together. So that's just a disconnect of how they want to coordinate the fights. If they're on the same page... They can make that happen, but I'm not sure if that small short break that we now have coming up is enough for them to get that synergy. Well, we'll see here as we get ready for game number three. We'll see if Leftovers can continue to play Lights Out or if Monkeys, it'll be in for them.